In its labyrinth of committees, there is one that matters vitally to America's military members and their families, the Armed Services Committee. Two of its members are here today, and they are here for a reason. They have consistently put patriotism ahead of politics. They have put the health, welfare, and even happiness of our military families above partisanship. And they have consistently been available to guide the Intrepids and the Fisher House Foundation's efforts in support of our nation's military families through the challenges of government decision making and helped us navigate the rivers of uncertainty and lethargy that we've had to cross. Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton has earned the trust, the respect, and the admiration of our nation's military for her unwavering support and personal compassion. She has been a compelling spokesperson for legislation assuring benefits for military families. And when Shelley Picorni behind me had problems getting through all of the plethora of benefits, it was Hillary Clinton that made her days easier. Senator Clinton has been an articulate advocate for our organization's efforts and a partner in our determination to provide the best that there is for our military families. Thank you, Senator Clinton. <laughs> Senator John McCain has continued a lifetime of courageous leadership and dedication to America during his period as United States Senator. With a career punctuated by patriotism, he continues his role as a leading supporter of the men and women who proudly wear our uniform. His presence here today dramatizes the courage of the men and women who will utilize the Center for the Intrepid, and it is a fitting reflection of his life of service to America. Both Senator Clinton and Senator McCain are among the 600,000 Americans who contributed to this center. We thank you both for that. America is grateful to both of you because of your demonstrable passion. You both set an example of unconditional commitment to our brave military families, an example for all of us to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here back in San Antonio and to be part of this extraordinary celebration, because that's indeed what it is. John Mellencamp reminded us that that's America. It really sums up that this could not happen anywhere else in the world. There is no other country that has responded time and time again to the cause of freedom like ours. There is no other country that has embodied the best virtues of humanity like ours. And there is no other country that has been so well served by those who have fought for our freedom and exemplified those virtues than ours. We are blessed to have so many who have given so much. But in return, we are obligated to ensure in every way we can that they and their families are given the support they have so richly earned and deserved. The Fisher family has understood that now for many years. And I am grateful for their leadership and example. 
They have recognized that in our nation, as Arnold Fisher so eloquently said, it is not just the government that acts for us, although the government is us. In a democracy, that's who we choose to represent us. But we are far more than that. And through the kind of commitment that the Fisher family has exemplified and that so many of you have contributed to, we are able to open this Center for the Intrepid. How well named it is. Those of you who may have been in New York perhaps have seen the Intrepid, have seen this brave, battered, but still proud symbol of America's commitment in wars going back to World War II. Its keel was laid at one week after Pearl Harbor, an attack that devastated our Navy and shocked our country, and the intrepid was our first answer. It told our enemies that they may have damaged our ships, but not our spirit. And so many service members served their country in good times and bad aboard the Intrepid through war and peace, including my friend and colleague, Senator John McCain. So we are here to celebrate once again that spirit and to thank our wounded warriors and their families for the devotion to duty, honor, and country that their lives exemplify. We know that for many of our wounded warriors, there will be a challenging road ahead. This center stands as a pledge, a solemn pledge, of the healing and support our nation owes every one of you. You remind us that the values that unite us far outweigh any differences that temporarily divide us. That indeed there is common ground on higher ground. And on that higher ground we stand today to pay in full our debt to those who defend us and to support one another as we look without fear to the future. May this center and the staff that serve so nobly here help all who pass through its doors to heal in body and soul, to look forward to a future that is still filled with potential to live long and productive lives at home and to continue in whatever way you choose to serve this nation that admires, respects, and loves you. We are eternally grateful. May God continue to bless you and the great country you have served. Thank you. I'm honored to participate with my friend and colleague, Senator Clinton, in the dedication of this extraordinary center and two new Fisher houses. And I want to add my sincere gratitude to the well-deserved praise for the intrepid fallen heroes fund, the Fisher family, and all those who have given generously. So Americans who have sacrificed so much for our sake will have the care they deserve and the comfort of their families as they recover from their wounds and rebuild their lives. To the servicemen and women for whom this center was built and their families, 
I know it's not possible for even the most grateful nation to compensate you in kind for the measure of devotion you have at great personal sacrifice given our country. We have incurred a debt to you that no matter how sincerely and generously we honor our obligations to you, we can never repay in full. We can offer you only the small tribute of our humility. You are the best Americans, and our best efforts to honor our debts to you will, far, will fall far short of what you have given and what you deserve. What you have done for us, we can never do for you. But we're mindful of that distinction and humbled by it. And our appreciation for your service demands us all to do what we can in less trying and less costly circumstances to help keep this nation a place, an idea, worthy of the hardships, danger, and sacrifices you have borne so valiantly for us. When a nation goes to war, a million tragedies ensue. None are more painful than the loss and injury of a nation's finest patriots. It is a terrible thing, war, a terrible thing, but not the worst thing. You know that. You who have endured the heartache and deprivations of war, so that the worst thing would not befall us, so that America might be secure in her freedom. As you know, the war in which you have fought has divided the American people, but it has divided no American in their admiration for you and from our obligation to you. We all honor you. We are all those who supported the decision that placed you in harm's way and those who opposed it. We are all humbled by your example and chastened in our prideful conviction that we, too, in our own way, have offered our country some good service. It may be true or it may not, but no matter how measurable our own contribution to this blessed and beautiful country, they're a poor imitation of yours. Please know that we know how little we have given compared to your service and the, and the solemn and terrible sacrifice made by those who have not returned with you to the country they loved so well. In the last few weeks, some of your brothers in arms have learned their tour in Iraq and Afghanistan will last longer than they were initially told. Others have learned that they will soon return to combat sooner than they had been led to expect. It is a sad and hard thing to ask so much more of Americans who have already given more than their fair share to the defense of our country. Few of them and their families will have greeted the news without feeling greatly disappointed and without offering a few well-deserved complaints in the direction of those of us who have imposed on them this additional hardship. Then they will so shoulder a rifle and risk everything, everything, to accomplish their mission, to protect another people's freedom and our own country from harm. It is a privilege beyond measure to live in a country served by you. God bless you and protect you.